Um, yep. It is going now, yeah? Yep. Okay. Uh, a couple of other demonstrations, this time to do with electromagnetism. And the idea of all of these demonstrations, particularly uh, the ones up in Letter Kinney, is to go over new ways of presenting or using equipment that we wouldn't otherwise have come across. So this one here, demonstrating uh, one of Linz's laws, or demonstrating Linz's law, if you get, uh, this is also known as Arago's disk, if you move a magnet around a non-conducting material, a non-conducting metal, you will find the metal will repel it. Try to repel the magnet. Because my magnet is stronger and my force is stronger than what's happening here, it will move away. So that is not magnetic in any way, shape, or form. And all I've got to do is move this around. And the way she goes. So you're demonstrating Linz's law. Uh, an electromagnetic field is induced. A magnetic field is induced. That magnetic field produces a current. That current has its own magnetic field. And that magnetic field... Sorry, what's induced first of all is an EMF. The EMF induces a current. The current has a magnetic field. That magnetic field responds to this magnetic field and is repelled by it. A variation on that is this guy here. In this case, it's going to, the magnetic field that's induced always opposes the magnetic field here. The effect is such to oppose, so that it will always try and reduce the effect that this guy has on it. So, or reduce the, the force that's causing it. So if this goes in, the can goes back. If this comes out, the can tries to follow it. So we go in and out without hitting the can, which is why I'm not going so quickly. The more quickly I do it, the more noticeable will be the effect, partly because I knew with my left hand. And then the other thing I want to match is what? Moving in. The frequency. Like, yeah. yeah. So I want to match the natural frequency of the can. So the can starts to move. And what's that phenomenon known as? Resonance. It's resonance. Okay. That's two little simple ones here. This is actually used by industry. You can use this guy as a brake. So you get this by spinning normally. It takes a long time to stop because of very low friction. You do it again. And you bring a magnet up very close to it. and it stops pretty quickly. So you actually have uh, elevators use this sort of phenomenon. It's used in uh, roller coasters or anywhere you get sudden drops in game and adventure theme parks. Um, they can switch this thing on pretty suddenly if they want and it acts as a brake for this guy here. One last one to go here. Uh, this is a simple motor. A motor is something that converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. All we need is a battery, a screw, and a magnet. I should say the magnets I'm using are neodymium magnets, so they're extra strong, but they're very commonly available at this stage, and they probably cost under a euro each. So they make things like demonstrations work well that never worked well before. So all you want to do is complete the circuit. You will then have a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. In this case, the current carrying conductor will be the wire, the magnet, and <coughs> the screw. But in particular, the screw acts as the low, uh, low friction, and the uh, current carrying conductor in a magnetic field experiences a force. I put it up like that, and away she goes. All right. One last time. Uh, wire. All I want to do is complete the circuit. And as soon as I complete the circuit, away she goes. Actually, second last time. This will be because this time I want to get it going on its own. Did somebody just walk out there? No, I'm sorry. This time I can take it away, and because it's low friction, it'll keep moving around. Louise so just simple. wants to get on the camera. I'm actually behind the screen. Uh, I'm done. Four simple demonstrations that'll do for now. Yeah.